Thanks, uh, Gershon, and, and thank you very much for the invitation to be here uh, today. I thought I, I should just tell you a little bit about me because you wouldn't recognise me from the, uh, the introduction that Gershon just gave. I, I'm just sorry my mother wasn't here to hear it because she could give quite a different picture about me. So uh, I teach uh, tax law at Sydney University. Um, I also work as a, as a consultant uh, to a tax uh, firm that is associated with uh, Herbert Smith Freehills, uh, which is one of the big three uh, law firms in Australia. Clients uh, of that firm are banks, property developers, mining companies, uh, the kind of people that um, that uh, some people find um, kind of unattractive. Uh, but I thought since transparency was a word of the day, I should be transparent about the fact that, uh, that I live and breathe in the real world as well as in the university. And I also uh, have a third hat. Uh, you can't see it at the moment, but uh, I have spent um, basically since, uh, since 1989 a lot of my time uh, working with uh, developing countries uh, for the OECD, the UN, the IMF, the World Bank, uh, and ASEAN, uh, and those projects have taken me to places from Lesotho through Kazakhstan to Vietnam. I have a, I have a, a very interesting passport if you like stamps. Um, so tax avoidance has been getting a lot of press. Uh, I'm, I'm here to talk about tax. Um, if you want to leave, this is probably a good time. Uh, tax avoidance has been getting a lot of press. Think Apple, Google, Starbucks, Microsoft, Amazon. Uh, I brought the, this morning's paper with me today, five stories about corporations behaving badly with respect, with respect to tax. Not a lot about that is news to anybody, although it seems to be being repeated as if it is new news. Um, in the UK, there were some very famous hearings uh, led by uh, the, the member for Barking, uh, a politician, uh, Margaret Hodge, uh, who grilled the CFO of Apple mercilessly. It makes great vision, if you want to call it up on YouTube, watching, watching this guy uh, squirm. Uh, there were equivalent hearings in the United States undertaken by uh, a US senator called Carl Levin. Uh, so there has been a lot of public disclosure about, about the behavior of multinational enterprises. And it's not surprising that civil society groups and NGOs have got excited about that because they see a very large pot of untaxed money. Uh, and the, the, the argument or the perception seems to be that that money is being lost to developing countries and that uh, if that money was collected as tax by developing countries, they could use it for various things uh, uh, associated with poverty alleviation. We could use it, we could spend it on maternal health, we could spend it on education, we could spend it on better infrastructure, we could spend it in, in any number of ways uh, to help our society. So the G20 uh, and the OECD uh, have formed an alliance in the tax space. Uh, it's, it's an interesting, coalescence of two completely impotent organizations. They will forgive me for saying that, but the G20 was an organization without a purpose. The OECD publishes statistics. You can't think of kind of any two less significant organizations, but they did manage to come together uh, in this space. The OECD got political power from the G20. The G20 got something to do from the OECD. Uh, and so we have, we have this thing called base erosion and profit shifting. Base erosion and profit shifting, also known as BEPS. You have to have an acronym. The acronym is BEPS. So there will be a resolution from the leaders meeting this weekend, basically saying to the OECD, love your work, guys, keep it up. You know, that's pretty much what, what will happen. Uh, that work is a thing called the BEPS Action Plan, and it consists of 15 action items which are directed at things like transfer pricing problems, uh, misusing international tax treaties, uh, uh, base eroding payments, paying interest and other expenses offshore, uh, trying to repatriate profits from tax havens, and a whole bunch of other things. So there will be 15 action items happening under BEPS. Alongside that project, is the transparency, the information part of, uh, of the international tax environment at the moment. 
Uh, so there is a lot of work being done, again, led by the OECD, not just in conjunction with the G20, but also in conjunction with the G20, about what's typically referred to as automatic exchange of information. The tax authorities in Australia discover something, they immediately ring up. US, UK, Canada, France, Germany, Norway, Sweden, all right, and tell everybody what we just discovered. So automatic exchange of information based on a thing called the common reporting standard. Uh, so the information can be read by the people who get it. There's the great stories in the tax world during the 1960s, the Americans used to send computer tapes uh, all around the world to people um, to tell them what was, what was happening. And the people would do things like say, oh, that's interesting. What do we do with that, Bob? Don't know. We got one last year. Put it in the cupboard. Because right? information needs to be accessible, needs to be able to be understood. So there's a lot of work going into the nuts and bolts of trying to get the information into a common format so everybody can understand what the hell it's saying. Right? So automatic exchange of information, common reporting standard, country by country reporting. Okay, so that you look at a multinational enterprise like BHP Billiton, and it operates in Australia, in Papua New Guinea, in Namibia, in Botswana, in South, Afri in South Africa, and it's got stuff in Chile. And there will be reports of how much profit, based on various indicators, is made in each of those places, how much tax is paid in each of those places. Uh, that work is uh, aimed at a kind of second stream in the international tax environment, trying to get better information both for governments, but also outside government. Right? Telling, telling civil society groups, telling academics, uh, telling the public at large stuff about what multinational corporations are doing. Uh, that has already happened in Australia. So we have rules now that require large corporates to disclose their tax information publicly. Those rules uh, are enacted. The first set of disclosures is, is, is about to happen. I should say businesses, in my experience, are not terribly distressed about any of that. Uh, in fact, if you look at the mining industry, the mining industry has a thing they call the Extractive Industries Tax Initiative, tax initiative which is basically mining companies and oil companies saying, we will tell you how much tax we pay in, pick your African country, because we are sick of the fact that we are blamed uh, for the fact that there is no education system, there's no health system. We pay a truckload of tax every year. We can't tell you where it goes. Uh -huh. Okay, so big themes, big themes. Controlling base erosion, source countries losing their tax. Controlling, controlling, um, getting better, ex better release of information. I thought I heard a bell, but I uh, it must have been wrong. Um, <laughs> What will happen in Australia? Well, Australia will do some things in response to that. We like to be seen to be good world citizens, so we will do some stuff that comes out of BEPS. Uh, but I think it's fair to say we Australian companies don't really think there is a lot in the BEPS agenda that worries them. At least that's what, what I'm hearing, because we've already got a lot of the rules that the OECD and the G20 are saying to people, you need a rule that does this. A lot of Australian tax law already does that. You know, okay, so we're kind of done, tick box, move on. Uh, for the developing world, which I take it is kind of part of the agenda for today, uh, is any of this gonna make a difference to the developing world? Uh, I think there is a perception, and I think it's probably right, that the BEPS agenda and the transparency agenda is the developed world fighting over a pot of money. It's Europe and America complaining, we're not getting tax and you're not getting tax. Uh -huh. there, may be, there may be big payoffs for the developed world. I will be surprised if that turns out to be the case. Uh, so I, I, it is, these are important, it's a great time to be in tax. If anybody wants a new career, go into tax because you can talk forever about it. There's a lot happening. Whether it will really result in significant changes that will benefit the developed world, I've got to say, I, I think the jury's still out on that. Although civil society groups are very, very keen to get that public exposure in the hope that it will result in better outcomes for the developed world. Thanks, Coach.